Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Sui Zeng. I was born and brought up in Beijing, China. I'm 14 years old and a rising freshman at Beijing City International School. I was admitted to the Eureka 101 workshop. Instead of working on the research topic I applied for, I actually decided to work on the course material for one of the courses the professor I worked with taught at her university. The course focused on anthropology and science fiction, specifically how anthropology helps us understand how factors like background, culture, and history has influenced character depiction in science fiction. I decided to pursue this project because I found explaining how people in various societies from different backgrounds might react to apocalyptic circumstances and also topics like human nature, science, obligations, and anthropology pretty interesting. After the first meeting with the professor, I was assigned six books, namely Anna Singh's The Mushroom at the End of the World, Vanessa Fong's Paradise Redefined, Susan Lopsalter's The Residence of Unseen Things, Susan Liu's The Dark Forest, Claire Knowles' The First Working Lines of Harry August, and Stephen Baxter's Art. I remember reading these books and being engaged by how the mushroom, a key actor in facilitating freedom for many individuals in nature, is a symbol of hope and birth. Surprised by how with the notion of golden broad entails is still somewhat relevant today. Taken aback by the uncanny connections between memories, hauntings, conspiracy theories, captivity narratives, and the tales of everyday life. Enraged at Lucifer squandering the world's resources while enjoying an extravagant life. Um, utterly invested into the duplicity and patient sharing displayed while trying to humiliate Vince's plan and seeing with the eyes of God, and conflicted by the trade-off between the hope of survival and injustice and leaving other people behind. I started reading after school ended in June and finished these books in two weeks before I met with the professor again for our second meeting. She introduced me to the project during that meeting. Um, I was supposed to choose one of the science fiction novels I read and read about how different people from each of the anthropological novels um, would react to the end of the world. From the start, I knew I really wanted to write about the scene from the flooding from art. This was because while I was reading, I wanted to explore characters and the general public that the author didn't write about in depth. Instead of engaging the perspective of the young adults that board the ark in search of a habitable planet to preserve humanity, I tried to craft a narrative that reflected those displaced by the flood and how they would react differently to the crisis the whole world was facing. I tried to deviate from Baxter's elitist worldview and imagine what the commoners had to go through when they were stuck in unceasing migration. This was why I decided to follow Alina Williams, a Masutake picker inspired by Singh's book, The Mushroom at the End of the World, in her life during the flooding. I imagined the hunger gnawing in her stomach, the, her abhorrence of a late society, as well as the hope she felt when finally being admitted into the government established holding area. It was then that I was able to integrate characters from Love Soldiers, The Resonance of Unseen Things, and Fong's Paradise Redefined. I wrote about Ethan, a survival, a survivor of alien abduction, and Kate, a Chinese transnational student who were both in the holding area and who both engaged in conversation with Elena when she entered. Through this discussion, I tried to establish their backgrounds and perspectives on the flood, as well as explore how the former impacted the latter. In the first draft of my short story, the ending was based on one of the scenes in Baxter's Flood, where the government established places where they brought displaced citizens um, and then killed them with toxic gases due to the problem of limited resources that was caused by the flood. I ended the story with a callback to the beginning of the piece, where Elena described her life in the forest as a monster target picture, picker, um, which was aimed to emphasize how the flood marked a watershed. Um, in the course of history. After showing the professor my work and talking to her about my ideas, she gave me a lot of feedback on character development, cohesivity, and structure in my writing, which helped me refine my story substantially. After a discussion, I added to the ending to explain what happened next to the narrator and other characters based on her feedback. For the ending, I tried to establish intertextuality with soothing red ferns in an instant, by following Elena, who was suspended between world of the living and world of the dead after she perished from the toxic smoke in the room. 
I started by describing Ethan and Kate's reactions to their fate, which were on some level influenced by the backgrounds that were established during their conversation and then narrating Elena's last act. So what happened was Elena found her parents, whom she was separated from during the flood, and finally was able to let go of the past and reunite with her brother on the other side. Um, in the end, I decided to use the title Remember to Breathe for my short story because I think it is able to correspond not only to the fresh air Elena breathed in out in the forest, but also to the exacerbation of pollution in the cities after flooding and how the government utilized noxious smoke to kill many citizens. The title is able to link the scene together and hint at the fate of many of the displaced that were described in my short story. I loved imagining this world, this new world in my head, challenging myself to craft more provocative and evocative images, and reading my work repeatedly, trying to decide between two different endings. This was my second short story in two years, and stepping outside of my comfort zone as I used to be really averse to creative writing was memorable, even though there was still much room for improvement. I was able to explore different writing techniques and challenge myself intellectually, enriching my academic experiences. After writing, I returned to the six books um, to think about the different characters and situations. I think writing helped me empathize with different people and think much more profoundly about the influence of background on individuals' actions, as well as other themes like obligation and corruption because I had to go through the brainstorming process when crafting my own narrative. As I didn't have enough time to start a new project, I decided to write discussion questions for each book and then discuss them with the professor during our meetings. For example, we considered the similarities between the books, like how the concept of a god shaped the reactions of individuals and how people united in times of crisis through forms like clubs, international collections, and new global institutions. We considered structural choices the different authors made and how that impacted the flow of the writing. Questions like, how much of the world can we experience before we become numb to its worth and beauty? And how are our choices impacted by the knowledge that the time we have on Earth is finite? I love the format of being able to not only share my own thoughts, but also to listen to a perspective of someone else living in a different country and someone who has had a completely different set of experiences. I think the biggest challenge that I faced during the workshop was deciding on what to write about. It took me about a week to decide between the scenes in the government established holding area, which I did end up writing about, versus focusing on the displaced citizens um, who were known as IDs and who tried to prevent the candidates from voting on art. By writing down the different instances where I could most effectively weave the backgrounds of different characters into the narrative helped me choose between these different thoughts and as a result writing became much more manageable. It took me around three afternoons to finish my first draft. Other than writing, I think all of our discussions were really casual and didn't pose any challenges. As I wrote down a lot of my questions and thoughts when I was reading and had a lot of time to think about these questions, um, this part, this discussion with the professor posed no difficulty. Overall, I've had many takeaways from my experience at Eureka. For example, this project has allowed me to consider ideas and discuss topics that I would have never considered before gaining insight into the writing process and participating in much more profound discussions I never had an opportunity to engage with my peers at school. I've also been able to experience how impartial accounts of real life experiences that differ from the, those we already understand can support our understanding and empathy of others. With all the skills I've learned, I think it will help me in the future when reading other books and also my writing by expanding my knowledge of the world and viewing them from a broader perspective. For example, the Eureka program has taught me to question how different backgrounds can change our interpretation of the same symbol, which was demonstrated through Sisanos and Anastasia's different attitudes towards forests. This structural thinking instead of just focusing on the plotline itself will help me with comparative literature and also help me write more realistic characters with more depth. I've enjoyed every second of all the meetings and feel extremely fortunate to be able to talk to the professor about these different works and also about other questions I had in my daily life. I would also like to thank my research advisor and all of the other teachers who continuously checked in with me and supported me during the summer. 
hope I will be able to participate in another unit or program in the future. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.